Encore Energy was the number one voted company for me to analyze this week. So should you buy Encore Energy? It's a great question. We're going to go through all the important information so that you can make an informed decision. First up, the financials. For the three months ended, March 31, 2024, they haven't launched their Q2 financials yet. But for Q1, they have a loss of $8.6 million. That's how much they lost in Q1 2024. In Q1 2023, they lost $6.8 million. Now, there is a lot more to a company than how much they're making currently. What matters is, will they make a lot in the future or will they make a lot less in the future? Will they be able to survive in the future? So for that, we look at the balance sheet. How much capital do they have? How long can they last at this rate? Well, this is the balance sheet. March 31, 2024, they have $425 million in total assets. They have $35 million in total liabilities. So just right there, they have an incredible incredibly healthy balance sheet. They have 10 times more assets on their balance sheet than they do liabilities, which means they're in a very healthy financial position. If we look at their current assets, these are the assets that they could liquidate and spend within a year. It's $124 million. The current liabilities, these, these are the liabilities they have to pay within a year. It's $24 million. So they have five times more liquid assets on their balance sheet to cover what they owe currently. So they have a very healthy balance sheet. So that's a snapshot of where they are as of March 31, 2024. Again, we haven't seen the Q2 financials, but currently a very healthy balance sheet. Now let's see what they have going on because obviously we don't want to be losing money forever. We don't want to be losing $8 million a quarter going forward. Will they ever make money? To answer that, let's dive into the company itself. Well, this is their goal to establish an annual production rate of 3 million pounds of uranium per year by the end of 2026 and 5 million pounds of uranium per year. So they are super focused on becoming a significant producer in the space. At 5 million pounds of uranium per year, current spot price is $80, let's say. That's $400 million of revenue per year. So the current situation, if they can make this happen, is nowhere near indicative of where they want to be or plan to be. Currently, the revenue for the first quarter of the year is $31 million. So they've already started producing, right? Look at March 31, 2023. They didn't have any revenue last year. Now they have $30 million of revenue. So at this run rate, they could generate $120 million this year. They want to grow to be generating 400 plus million dollars this year. Obviously, it all depends on the spot price of uranium. We know it's in a multi-decade supply crunch because of how scarce it is. So as the price rises, their revenue would increase. Now, one thing to note when looking at this income statement, right? Their cost of goods sold, this is the cost to acquire the uranium that they've sold, $28 million. They've only generated $3 million, $30 million on that cost. So they've only made $2 million. So they're not a low cost producer. If you just do the math right here, based on their income statement, their cost of of uranium is 93% of the revenue they are generating. So let's say they're selling their uranium at $80 per pound. Their cost per pound would be $75. That's based, again, purely on their financials. So that is really not ideal. We covered Dennis and Mines, incredibly low cost producer. This one so far not low cost, but let's see what they have in store for the future, right? Again, their goal, 5 million pounds of uranium per year in a few short years. So this is how they're expected to generate the 3 million pounds per year by 2026 and the 5 million pounds per year by 2028. So currently they have the Rosita extension. That's generating their $30 million of revenue per year. They're starting Alta Mesa in 2024. And then they have these mines coming online. These are all in South Texas, right? We wanna be in the United States, especially since the US government is pumping money into the uranium supply chain to make sure these mines can start cash flowing. And so all these other mines, we have big production coming on in 2025 and beyond and a lot from South Texas. 
And then we have South Dakota slash Wyoming plants expected to launch heavily in 2026. Each one of these expected to generate a million pounds per year. So this is their goal. This is their production pipeline. Very healthy from a future revenue perspective. So they already have firm deliveries, 4.2 million pounds of uranium from 2023 to 2033. So they are producing, right? That's what's important because the second the uranium spot price goes up higher, that's all profit for these guys. This is very positive. Contracts are structured with pricing that reflects market conditions at the time of execution with floors and ceilings that are adjusted annually for inflation. They don't want to be locked in at very low prices. As inflation rises, they're going to generate more revenue in line with that. So that is positive. And this is really positive. This is why current year earnings don't necessarily matter because at current prices, we plan to contract less than 50% of our planned annual production rates they're waiting contracting will likely increase if spot prices begin to spike current contracts represent less than 30 percent of our planned production through 2032 so they're being smart they understand the supply crunch that is going on with above ground uranium there's not enough available and so they're waiting for the price to spike very positive. Again, they have a very healthy balance sheet. They can wait it out. But again, this is just another sign of why the spot price has to rise to incentivize these mines to let go of their uranium. So again, they have inventories, they're producing healthy balance sheets. So far, so good. The one thing is that, that isn't so positive is again, their cost of goods sold, but that's historic. They haven't even started launching the bulk of their production. That's mainly from one mine so far. Now, South Texas, this is where most of their production is gonna come from. South Texas is a prolific US district for sandstone hosted ISR production with historic production of over 80 million pounds. Most progressive permitting and production jurisdiction in the US, that's very positive. The worst thing you can do is have all this uranium in the ground, but too much bureaucracy to get it out of the ground. So very positive to be in South Texas. 47 identified deposits with 60 million pounds of in-situ mineralization remaining. The USGS estimates the potential to discover an additional 220 million pounds. That's where it gets really exciting. So let's say at $100 per pound, they could have $20 billion worth of uranium in the ground, right? Very, very positive for this asset. Now, obviously, it'll cost a lot to get that uranium out of the ground, but it shouldn't cost more than $20 billion to get that out of the ground, right? And in the meantime, they're going to be cash flowing. And that's at $100 spot price. What if it goes up, which is it's expected to, which these companies are expecting. So again, very positive for this company. So this is the Rosita CCP and satellite well fields now in production. They're not the lowest cost producers of uranium based on the cost of goods sold for this company. But as the price rises, their profit will rise. And again, these are just two of their producing mines. They also have a joint venture with Boss Energy, accelerating companies company-wide production. They have a joint venture on Alta Mesa with Anchor holding a 70% joint venture interest and remaining the project manager and Boss Energy holding a 30% joint venture interest in exchange for a payment of $60 million. So this is kind of where these uranium mines are going to be getting their cash flow, right? Boss Energy paid Encore Energy $60 million for a 30% stake in this mine. This is why it's so important to have rights to mine uranium in the ground because big companies like Boss Energy are going to be paying you tens of millions of dollars for the privilege of getting a piece of that uranium. So very, 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 very positive for Encore. And, and again, if they have hundreds of millions of pounds potentially to explore and find in the region, more and more, they're going to make more and more massive deals with big companies. So again, very positive. That's how they can cash flow some of these projects and bring them online. This Alta Mesa joint venture is made up of 200,000 acres of private land in the South Texas uranium belt with exploration opportunities. There's 52 linear miles of stacked uranium roll front identified, only five miles explored to date. So there should be a massive amount of uranium in the ground at this project. That's why Boss Energy is investing tens of millions of dollars in it. Then we have the Dewey Burdock project in South Dakota. Remember, this one was supposed to come online in 2026 at a million pounds of uranium per year. So they're saying it has a mine life of 20 
one years at a million pounds per year. Very, very, very positive. Now, this is where it gets exciting, right? Their current earnings aren't that high because the cost to produce uranium at the one mine that was really producing in Q1 2024 was too high. But now with the planned Dewey Burdock project in South Dakota, what they're saying is that the initial CapEx costs of $31.7 million is sector leading for a project of this size. We talked about how they have $400 million in assets on their balance sheet. They have $125 million of liquid assets that, that can easily cover the $31.7 million required for the initial CapEx costs. CapEx costs are the costs required to get this thing up and running. Very positive. Then they're saying there's a pre-tax IRR, internal rate of return of 55%. So they're going to make a return of 55% at a $55 per pound long-term uranium price. So this is a low cost mine. If uranium is at $55 per pound, they could make a profit internal return of 55% after tax of 50%. So very low cost producer, very positive for the future of this mine. Then we have the Gas Hills project in Wyoming. Initial CapEx costs $26 million, well within the range of what they can afford. And a pre-tax IRR internal rate of return of 116% at a U.S. spot price of $55 per pound. So a very low cost producer because they're going to be profiting massively at the Wyoming mine and the South Dakota mine. If the spot price is $55 per pound, they're going to make huge profits. So attractive project economics at low uranium prices, pre-tax internal rate of return, consider this to be profit 44%. At a $35 per pound long-term uranium price. So they're going to be cash flowing massively when these projects come online. And at this point, it's a matter of when, not if, because they have the capital to invest in these projects. So the net present value, which is kind of what the new mine is going to be worth as of today, is $147.5 million after tax. That's the South Dakota mine. The Wyoming mine net present value is $102 million. So add that to the value of this company, to the market cap of this company. Again, that's at very low uranium spot prices. And then the New Mexico project, the Crown Point and Hosta Butte projects in New Mexico have total estimated resource endowment of 44.7 million pounds of indicated mineral resources. This one's supposed to go online in 2029. And so they have a long-term production pipeline, very healthy project at this point. So in conclusion, very interesting company. This is the chart of Encore. It has been moving up. Its market cap is only 721 million. Remember, the market cap is the cost to acquire the entire company, 100% of the company. Remember, their balance sheet alone had $425 million of assets. So the, the value of the company, the assets on the balance sheet as a percentage of its market cap are relatively high. It will start to kick off earnings, which is very exciting. It's going to be producing heavily, millions of pounds per year. They have a viable path to make that production possible. They're going to be cash flowing. They're obviously right now with their current mine as of Q1 2024, they're a very high cost producer. So that's just one concern to monitor over time. But if they're correct that they're going to be a lower cost producer, their costs are going to come down as millions of pounds of uranium come online. Then that's very positive, right? So we can't just look at Q1 2024. We have to look at the future. So they have growth ahead. They're well capitalized. They have a partnership with Boss Energy. As the uranium price rises, they're expected to increase their cash flow increase their profits. We have the U.S. government backing them up. They're doing everything they can to make these U.S. mines viable and to support U.S. production, even talking about creating a reserve for local uranium. So Encore is a very interesting project.
Yes, it's gone up since 2019. It's gone from 30 cents to $4. So it's 10 X, but it's dipping now based on the amount of cash flow it has, the amount of runway it has, the amount of future production that is coming online, the amount of revenue and earnings that are going to be generated. This seems like a strong buy, period especially as the uranium price rises. Now they're super dependent on that uranium price rising, but we are in a supply crunch. We cover this every week on the nuclear news. So they are well positioned to take advantage of the nuclear renaissance and are still a very early stage project in terms of their future growth. So overall, a solid project. This one would have to be a buy as well as Energy Fuels and Denison Mines, three high quality companies. So far, we haven't covered any low quality companies, but we're really diving into these companies to make to, to confirm their quality. But so far, three very high quality companies covered so far Denison Mines, Energy Fuels, and Encore. We only cover assets that have potentially life changing returns that can skyrocket over time. Remember, if uranium is the new oil, then some of these could be the future Exxon Mobiles of the world right? Because they have access to tens of millions of pounds of the new oil that's going to be powering a nuclear future, right? So that's why we're staying on top of these early stage assets. If you have any more you want me to cover, just let me know.